And so over the last decade, there have been a, a number of, of clinical trials evaluating a number of different therapies that have demonstrated some promising results for patients with HER2 mutated non-small cell lung cancer. And this was a, a recent uh, editorial uh, that was published in the New England Journal that just highlights uh, some of the most pertinent trials that, uh, to date in HER2 positive non-small cell lung cancer. And these in, uh, initially started with these non-selective tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which you know, showed uh, very modest objective response rates with, um, with very limited uh, disease control rates. Um, and then that progressed to trials involving selective um, HER2 tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which demonstrated improved um, objective response rates anywhere from 20, uh, 20 to 44% in, in our patients. But the duration was rather limited with median progression free survivals of five to six months. And these uh, drugs were associated with a number of, of toxicities. The monoclonal antibodies directed towards uh, HER2 and non-small cell lung cancer have also uh, demonstrated modest acti anti-tumor activity in uh, HER2 positive patients. But we've recently received some really exciting results um, in HER2 mutated non-small cell lung cancer patients by utilizing these antibody drug conjugates, um, which I'm gonna talk about in a little more detail. So just going back to our little schematic, um, here again, highlighting these antibody, uh, her anti-HER2 antibody drug conjugates. So what this is, is um, a, a monoclonal antibody directed towards HER2 that has a chemotherapeutic agent attached to it. And when it binds to the HER2 receptor, that receptor gets internalized and then releases that chemotherapeutic agent um, into the cell and subsequently it induces cell death. And just earlier this year, we received results from a multi-center international phase two study looking at trastuzumab deruxtecan in HER2 mutated non-small cell lung cancer. And this evaluated a total of, of 91 um, patients with HER2 mutated non-small cell lung cancer that have uh, progressed on a number of previous therapies. And in this trial, we saw um, objective response rate of 55%. The median duration of response was 9.3 months with a progression-free survival of 8.2 months and an overall survival of 17.8 months. And so these were uh, very exciting results. And I'll just go through um, the trial just in a little bit more detail. So when we look at the patient characteristics, it's very similar to what we see in, in um, HER2 mutated non-small cell lung cancer patients. Uh, there was a total of 91 subjects in this trial. Uh, the median age was 60. Uh, there was a female predominance and the vast majority of patients either were never or light smokers. Uh, the vast majority of uh, patients had received uh, several lines of previous therapy with a median number of two lines of previous therapies. The vast majority of patients, 66, had received pr previous immunotherapeutic regimen and 14% here had received a previous tyrosine kinase inhibitor directed uh, towards HER2 signaling. And just highlighting again, the response rates were 55% with a duration of response of 9.3 months. Median progression-free survival was 8.2 months and overall survival of 17.8 months. And then here is the waterfall plot from the trial with a waterfall plot uh, in the y-axis is the percent change of tumor from baseline. So uh, patients that have shrinkage of their tumor, these bars go down. And you can see the overwhelming majority of patients in this trial, the bars go down, showing that most patients had a reduction in the tumor size while on therapy. Um, so very exciting results. And it's important to mention that um, grade three or higher drug-related adverse events did occur in 46% of patients. Um, these were mostly uh, GI or hematologic adverse events. Um, however, one adverse event that's important to note uh, with these therapies is that potentially serious interstitial lung disease did develop in 26% of these patients. Now, um, the vast majority of these were grade one and grade two, but two patients did die in this trial from interstitial lung disease. So and moving forward, I think it will be important to understand uh, why this specific drug is associated with this toxicity and that patients on the, these therapies need to be monitored uh, closely for this toxicity. So I think with these results, um, I, 
trastuzumab durox tecan has really established itself within the uh, treatment paradigm of HER2 mutated non-small cell lung cancer patients. And I think we just need further data about where do these, uh, where does this really fit, you know, within, within that paradigm. And fortunately, there's already an ongoing trial um, looking at this therapy uh, in the frontline setting. So this is the trial schematic of the DESTINY Lung 04 study. Uh, that's enrolling uh, locally advanced or metastatic non-small cell lung cancer patients with um, HER2 um, mutations. These patients are naive to systemic therapy and they have no known uh, oncogenic, um, other oncogenic mutations. And the patients are being randomized one-to-one -one with one arm receiving trastuzumab uh, deruxtecan and the second arm receiving standard of care a chemotherapy immunotherapy combination uh, with the primary endpoint being preferred progression-free survival. Um, so really exciting, uh, this trial is ongoing, which may incorporate this, uh, this therapy into the frontline setting. So in conclusion, as the number of targeted therapies continues to expand, having broad molecular testing to identify potential oncogenic driver mutations is really critically important, as Dr. Calvo mentioned. HER2 mutations occur in approximately two to 3% of non-small cell lung cancer patients. And great progress is being made in development of novel therapies targeting HER2 signaling with multiple target agents showing promising results with trastuzumab deruxtecan being the best to date. And that further research is really needed and slash ongoing to develop biomarkers to predict efficacy, understanding uh, these mechanisms of resistance, to develop novel combination strategies and defining optimal sequential treatment strategies. So with that, I really want to thank you for your attention, and I think we'll move on to the Q&A session.